This is our full driving review, all new generation of the Volvo V60. And I welcome you here to Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. An exterior, interior with a lot of surprises, I can tell you, and of course a driving experience. And this will also, of course, show how the S60, the sedan version later of this car, will behave. So join us now here in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! The second generation of the 60 model lineup with Volvo is here on the so-called SPA platform and that is the same platform that the bigger models, the 90 models, so XC90, V90, S90 are using and also the new XC60. Here the second generation of the V60, you can see here the front grille with those vertical fins. This is the momentum trim level. I'm really happy to show you a mid trim level. Probably momentum is the trim level that's how the car will be bought by most people with the inscription the top trim which I do not recommend because it's even more expensive then you get also a chrome finish which is in this case a little bit nicer but I think overall it looks quite sporty already also with a lower bumper right there and those are Thor's hammer LED headlamps they are already included here in the momentum trim probably later they will also go with the entry level trim which is a little bit less expensive than this one but I think the momentum is actually a good pick also with a strong red color for you here today but we've already shown you some other colors which we have here on location that you can pick your favorite color for today but for camera I always tend to pick the strongest color if available 4 meters 76 or 15 foot 6 is the length of this new generation that's 14 centimeters longer than the predecessor and that's actually a quite significant change we'll see how that one plays out in the interior for sure this one here has 18 inch rims i think it's a good compromise overall they already look huge but you still have enough tire left that you don't damage those too easily also in this two color scheme here very beautifully done overall it's a rather simplistic design you see, can see round shapes here at the height of the door handle chrome contrast around the windows also with the same color here the chrome design of the roof rates here you can see <laughs> how i closed the car uh, hey that even works with the rear door handle interesting usually it's just with the front door handle that when you you know hold your hand right there on the outside it closes also the mirror closes and when you put your hand inside but it also worked with the rear handle interesting finding and then you know this classic estate shape here with a little stronger shoulder line and as i said later on you will also have the s60 which will be absolutely completely the same car overall unless you'll just have the line dropping right here this one of course here more practical in the loading volume which we will soon take a look at so here we go with the rear with this classic shape of the Volvo SUVs and also the estates that we have those vertical tail lights right there which are then again have this horizontal shape at the lower part overall a rather clean Scandinavian design here as well and in the lower part we really see real exhaust tips no fake at all the real deal although you know they are just using the four cylinder engines do you want to know more about the engines you can see that you can hardly see anything with those classic engine covers here and the diesel all two liter four cylinder same for the petrol engine this one here diesel today is either available with 150 or 190 horsepower or front wheel drive and then you have the petrol engines which go also starting with front wheel drive then with 250 horsepower then you got an all-wheel drive version with 310 horsepower and then there will be the plug-in hybrids and they will be very powerful 340 system power output or 390 horsepower system power this one then will be the t8 and 390 horsepower for such a mid-size car this is well this is really something but of course most people also want to keep rather low in the price it will still be in a very expensive car 40,000 at least and if you equip a vehicle with you know some stuff 
50,000 easily and some more, then you can also already reach 60,000 euros, just you know, to give you some exp um, expensive <laughs> examples. But it will be the same list price if you compare the competitors, you know, Audi A4, Mercedes C-Class, BMW 3 Series. So um, it's the premium segment, you pay the high prices. But sometimes, of course, there will be some discounts or special leasing rates with, then again, um, you know, differentiate a little bit from the list price, which is, again, really high. This is the car key and the keyless entry I showed you earlier. Very solid door handles, also solid door closing sound inside of the doors. Momentum trim level with the so-called city weave option. Really beautiful with the gray fabric, Scandinavian living room style. Soft touch leatherette on the armrest. Then here also soft touch with the structured material. Really beautifully done, also galvanized door handles from the inside. Optional with memory function for the seat if you have two drivers. Harman Kardon, optional sound system, about 2000 euros, but it really pays off if you like music. It's a great sound for a mid sized vehicle, I can tell you. Then the rest of the interior with a bright setup here with a so called city weave optional, as I told you. I can really recommend you that. Steering wheel with a great contrast, dark outside, bright interior, and wow, this is really so cool. I can understand if some people say, yeah, it's a little bit too much for me, but I think it is daring somehow. We also seen that on Geneva Motor Train, also in the Volvo V40, and it's uh, fabric on the inside and leatherette on the outside, so a sustainable solution also Volvo is offering as alternative to real leather. I think really great that they offer it in the middle trim, but you can also go with just black fabric seats in most countries if you want a more subtle view. Here in this case, also done with the electric support, for all the seats, this is with lumbar support electric for the lower seat and then here for the higher seat option. But I think it's really a wow effect with the interior and great that they offer that already right here. Also with the entry cap at the lower part. So I think with the aluminum look as a contrast right there. You can um, of course argue if it fits to the red exterior color, I think maybe not in all cases, but I would definitely have picked this one here in the interior with a blue exterior that would fit tremendously. So and now let's get inside. The doors open not that wide but it's still easy to get inside. Mid-size standard vehicle so you have a rather low seating position. Mm, the window is not that big so you don't have the widest view to the um, to the exterior. Um, one meter is 86 or six foot one and this is here equipped with a panoramic roof so it doesn't leave too much headroom. If you want more headroom or if you're taller than me and leave out this panoramic roof we will soon show you as well. Also with a nice bright fabric here from the inside of the ceiling. Overall very comfortable those seats. Superb and to me I can just you know this is also something subjective but I tested so many vehicles in the past years and I think Volvo has the most comfortable seats overall from the seat form. And of course if, you're all, if they also offer some great materials then it's a, definitely a good fit. Also the seat belt here is in bright color by the way. So um, you know I tend to uh, like driving SUVs because it's just more comfortable if you have the upright seating position but with Volvo cars I always experience it even if you have the normal conservative classic cars which are low in the seating position they are still super comfortable and you don't get this lower back fatigue um, because their seat form is somehow you know just good. Steering wheel can be adjusted in all the ways, like this, also a very smooth process, so you can really find a good driving position. Of course, it will be very exciting how much legroom we will have in the rear part, because they have made the car longer, as I said earlier. We will soon experience that. Before that, I want to show you the cockpit overview. And here it is, the interior overview. Wow, again, for a mid-size vehicle, I think to me also the most emotional one, that is, um, you know, with those 
curved lines right here. This is, you know, Mercedes also using the curved lines for sure. You can compare it a little bit with that. But then again, they have this vertical screen setup, 9.2 inch, soon more deals to the software, soft touch on the higher part. Everything is so well thought out from the build quality. Maybe some parts will be in the lowest trim, a little bit different, but as I said, this is middle trim with some options, so um, it will predominantly like this. Again, this two color steering wheel is really pleasing. Um, you know, the materials here with the buttons, I was never a fan of that with the new Volvo models, but I think it's overall okay. Um, nothing super fancy, but also nothing bad. Also with the six speed manual gearbox right here, which we have. Um, then one button just left basically here in the top part to play music or for the um, loudness. And then some mandatory buttons left and right. Everything else is done with the touchscreen. Also here, for example, with the um, vent control, I'll soon show you more details about that. So the temperature, as I said earlier, um, you can scroll like this or tap tap like this or tap here. And the new voice control function, let's see if it works here. I'm cold. Temperature set to 22 degrees. See, and then let's try another way. Set temperature to 23 degrees. Temperature set to 23 degrees. Wait, that's really cool. So uh, that's one less distracting thing if you have to do it while driving because you don't have a turning knob. Just use the voice command at the steering wheel and then say it. So I think it's a good solution overall then. Then the GPS looks like this. You can also make it bigger and it also reacts quite fastly like a smartphone style. Other than that, you have the um, sound system, I told about that earlier, or earlier, really good surround sound with the optional Harman Cologne system, you can have some options right there. Top part, you can reach the settings, for example, also change the language, and if you scroll to the left, you can, for example, follow the rest of it, I would, could kill Holger cameraman right now when <laughs> I flip down the rear head restraints. I was hurt by those once, I won't do it again for someone else. Camera right here. So quite okay resolution, it's a very wide angle, uh, but then at least you can see everything and there's also the 360 degree available. Well, the rear door is still open and if we close it like this, and we also have the full view, pretty cool system overall. And then you can also go to the right and have some more options. For example, you can pick the radio setup and Bluetooth, but also Apple CarPlay is available or Android Auto if you connect it with the cable. Now we also have a head-up display, for example, for speed and the maximum speed allowed. And you will also have some GPS information when the route is running. And the digital instruments, left side speed, right side RPM. In the middle part, you get some additional information, um, for example, and also, you know, temperature, doors open. And on the right lower part, you'll then get a consumption, which is, again, just in standstill, not realistic at the moment. <laughs> Very nice detail. It's actually a quite huge rear mirror that's good to see all the stuff behind and it is frameless therefore it's still somehow elegant and just a nice detail in this vehicle. So this is here in the middle console it's a simple slick material but it's bright and it feels actually matte and somehow good and thank you Volvo for avoiding more shiny black plastic elements because we don't like them, Brian and me. <laughs> in the front, you can, for example, put the key, then you can slide this one open, like this, da 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 da. And there are some adaptive cup holders here, two right there, another 12 volt power supply. This is then the start engine button, you just turn it to the right. Drive modes are selected here with this crystal style, and then the electric handbrake, and this. Armrest is fixedly attached and here you have two USB supplies then, but not too much room right there. And if you want optional, also still a classic CD changer. And now this panoramic roof, there is a shade available. You can remove if it, if it gets too hot, for example, meanwhile. And wow, it really goes all over the vehicle, especially for the rear passengers. It will be great. And if you think, yeah, you know, I want more space than in a convertible, but at least I want a big panoramic roof in my non-convertible that's available right here. Well, the opening in the front is not too huge, but overall the glass roof is really huge and brings so much light into this already light interior. Now the seating experience in the rear compartment. Well, the door doesn't again open that wide. 
but still it's fairly okay to get in here but it could be a little bit you know not that handy when you want to install child seats easel fix by the way on the outside of the seats each well and this is the key to this new generation now you have proper leg room in the rear of course when the car gets long on the exterior you will have more problems you know in some parking lots or narrow cities but if you want more leg room this new generation will help you still leg room left right there and also this black uh, this back plastic cover here with this matte material again it's simple but it's so well done somehow again headroom also again it fits for me again if you are taller than me taller than one meters 86 or six foot one then you should leave out the panoramic roof if you're driving with tall passengers in the rear a lot overall it's also a good seating position here however the segment itself those mid-size sedans tend to have rather short benches in the rear and you fall backwards a little bit which is not good because for long-term seating comfort it's good when your pelvis or hüft or becken is in german is is more upright you know that's better for the long-term comfort then also the same setup here with the bright seat pads and the nice city weave design in the rear part and if you want to fold them already from here that is possible um, you can also have you know this automatic function it's the same when i push the button in the front that those head restraints go down you have a better view to the rear then and then they fold flat like this i think it's a good solution also with a soft cover here on the back part and we'll of course soon show you how that looks from the rear and last but not least push it back you cannot adjust the angle you have this middle part with some cup holders right there and the ski hatch available and optional you can also get here another climate unit let's take a look at that in detail so if the engine is running you also have seat heating for the rear passengers <laughs> let's make holger sweat now <laughs> and you can also control the temperature right there so it's optional even a four zone ac but again costly option you have to ask yourself how often you would use it for your rear passengers so opening the electric hatch either with the button here with the key or then with this foot opening mechanism if you have something in your hands and then it opens and it closes the same way if you do just the same move by the way then this um, cover is the weakness of this vehicle you can either Put it up like this in this rail on the side but it does not do that automatically or you can remove it completely and then it gets a little bit wobbly like this um, so i really don't like this they have better solutions in other vehicles for sure but then the rest i think is quite okay 530 to 1360 liters is the loading setup here you can separate the trunk that's a good solution here to um, secure things inside the trunk and then below this one here you have some more space or maybe all optional a replacement tire on the left side you um, can store some smaller things but then again if you want all those um, different attachments here you have to pay a lot of lot extra i think that's not a nice move from them that you have to pay for everything extra when you want to install some more things then on the right part here you can have the flipping of the bench like this this is an easy solution which is for example uh, you know missing in that way in an audi a4 you have some more um, you know work to do there this is a very easy solution then you can load through a lot of things this is really cool it's not as in those very old volvos which have super square dimensions in the rear but still a very usable compartment And now to the driving part, aka Thomas's driving lounge. It was a new Volvo V60, manual gearbox six speed, and the D4 diesel 190 horsepower is 6.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And by the way, if you think about Yano, you know, critical diesel, you know, I'm not a diesel fan either, but this one here also now with the SCR cleaning and fulfills the Euro 6D temp regulation so overall it is um, you know fulfilling all the needs for the very strong um, emission tests that are implemented in the right now so um, if you're driving you know, a lot a lot a lot of kilometers that might make sense for you then especially because the consumption with the Volvo vehicles 
in general they are actually quite high let's see what we can score today here and we'll also give you different um, you know, driving impressions motorway countryside and so on so and we'll start here some corners and also soon head on to the motorway to show the performance of the engine overall it's basically the standard suspension we have equipped here today with the car and smoothens out the waves on the road very evenly so that makes a very uh, very smooth impression on the motorway right here well, people walking side of the street interesting <laughs> the manual gearbox actually Tesla Model S arriving here the manual gearbox is actually quite easy to control it's actually well I don't want to get on here right okay so um, it's very easy to shift no resistance it's also in the very high level of your arm when you just put your arm right here so it's actually fun to shift as well you see the car is leaning to the side a little bit so the suspension it doesn't have the sportier setup which to me is totally fine because not every vehicle does necessarily need to have the sportier setup so Volvo here at least with the base suspension is more going for a standard suspension setup let's take it that way but I feel it would be a good compromise so for also the noise insulation it seems very quiet here in this cabin they definitely have improved that if you compare it to the previous generation. It is somewhat longer than the previous generation, yes, but I don't feel that it would be less agile or that it would be bulkier than before or something. Um, so I think they've managed that also with the new platform setup, which brings more torsional stiffness than to the vehicle. So um, interesting also because Holger is driving an A4 estate at the moment. What would you say? Just from the first impression, feeling, suspension-wise, what do you think is the difference? I think it's, it's more smooth in its current. Really? You think this one is smoother than yeah. the A4, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, Audi is obviously going a little bit sportier in the direction, BMW then even sportier. So, um, this one here, and I realized it quite often before, from the whole driving feeling, Volvo is coming closest to the setup that Mercedes is using, whereas Audi goes a little sporty and then BMW even sportier. So you can just pick that um, depending on, on your preference, for example. So let's now go here with the first acceleration test. Third gear, 70 kilometers to 100. Let's go. Plop. There we go. So that's, um, you know, not a performance vehicle, but surely enough performance for the motorway. No problem here with the um, fossil in the engine. That's totally fine. Let's now also head up in the higher gears. See sixth gear now at 100 kilometers an hour. And we see we're just above 1000 RPM. And that's of course, thanks to the diesel, that we can keep it at very low RPM than in, in those area. And at 100 kilometers an hour, still pretty silent in here so I think overall good result I also really like the new head-up display where I can keep the speed directly in the you know line of the my view that's also well done the car does not feel that big maybe also because the front cockpit compartment here is rather a little bit narrow let's take it that way I don't feel caged in um, but I still think that it's feeling rather small for such a vehicle Let's now also go back to some gears and see if we can you know, drive a little bit faster on this area. Next gear, going a little sporty now, 130, 140. And still, sound insulation wise, I think um, one of the best things they've changed here with the vehicle, it's really way more silent than the previous generation. And it gives me Although the suspension is not the stiffest one, not all set on the sportiest way, a good feeling here on the road. Also still, this car is stable when I'm you know, changing here, a little bit lanes on the high speed. The one thing I already noticed was, for example, the XC60 or also one of the other new models, the steering feel. Look here, for example, in the very low angles, this is completely dead, you know, in this like minus five to plus five degrees 
not so much is happening. And then if you cross this angle area, it starts to feel a little bit artificial. So it's really easy to steer this vehicle, yes, and that helps you when you park in and out, mm, but they don't manage to get a very natural steering feeling. So um, they are the, in this case, the German manufacturers have you know, a, a fi more finely tuned or refined setup with the steering so you have more control of the car and it's also a little bit more fun to drive the car. Maybe we could get another feeling with another drive mode. Yep, that's a good idea, Holger, with the drive mode. So um, we start here in the comfort mode. You get the eco mode, but um, <clears throat> you know, that is reducing the throttle input a little bit, not changing the steering. Um, this is more making sense if you have an automatic gearbox optional, then the eco mode will play more an effect. But we can also go to the dynamic mode, which is then increasing the throttle input. It would change with the automatic transmission that it goes up the gears later and down earlier again. Here we have the, the manual gearbox. Um, you're doing that manually yourself anyway then. But I feel you have more throttle input. The car accelerates then a little bit earlier overall. And well, that the first angles of the steering are basically dead. This is still the case. Um, let's do a lane change here and let the other vehicle by. Let's see if the rest of the steering changed a little bit. Let's go back again to the comfort mode and see. Yeah. So um, when you're then in, you know, in those areas where the steering gives you response, the dynamic mode, makes the steering a little bit stiffer then. So you have to work it a little bit more. And I think I mean, it's good that you have those options. If you, for example, think, ah, the steering is really too soft for me, then you can go to the dynamic mode and just control it for yourself. And if you then have the manual gearbox anyway, you won't have a problem that you, you know, drive with high RPM all the time because you're shifting yourself anyway. So again, those driving modes make more difference when you have the automatic gearbox. But good to have them to have the choice. So let's go to the... Yeah, I mean, German Autobahn is sometimes really some crazy stuff. I mean, if you are driving in Germany all the time, you get used to it. But if some foreigners then come here, they really think that those are racetracks. And well, for us, uh, some parts it's true, but for the most part it's not. Let's get to some more speed here. So now we're in six gear at 150 kilometers an hour and the car is still remaining really silent. Lane change. Again, stable suspension wise, but again, the thing driving wise I criticize most is this rather numb steering feel, no matter in, in which mode you are actually in. But then again, the overall setup for this car is rather for this comfortable ride and not necessarily for the sporty ride. And then you could maybe say you could also excuse that for this. But I mean, it's surely something they could still improve. If we're driving on the motorway, by the way, it's also, you know, higher speeds, but don't vary it that much. We can always tell you something about consumption because that's something where you can say, yeah, that's maybe close to a minimum consumption. Then we had some acceleration tests, so we can also have somewhat an average. And at the moment we are about seven liters on 100 kilometers. That's again, way above the official stated figure for sure but already a quite realistic figure. And I have to say, I would rather expect something like this from a petrol engine and not from a diesel. And that proves again the second criticism point. We have that with every Volvo, they consume too much fuel and this downsizing they're doing is not working for the real consumption. It works for their fleet consumption, but not for the effective consumption you have as a customer. We'll keep you updated, by the way, with the consumption throughout this driving part. First, we'll now go off the motorway and have some more driving fun in the countryside. Now at about 70 kilometers here in the corner, pushing it a little bit. Holger's getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was quite well handled again. Um, so overall, I think they found a great comfortable suspension setup. Most people will be happier here with a little bit more comfortable suspension than with a very sporty suspension because, you know, when you're driving this vehicle, a mid-size vehicle, maybe a really lot of kilometers per year, 
then you more appreciate the comfort, I guess. The side support from the seats could be better. Side supports from the seat could be better, says Holger. Yeah, I mean, they are not that sporty, the seats. Um, they have a little support in the, you know, the, 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 the thigh support. It's a little bit more stronger than the lower support here at your legs. So it's probably something um, very interesting that the co-driver is mentioning that because, you know, me as a driver, I'm always holding on to the steering wheel, so I don't care about it that much because you can hold on there. But this car, uh, unlike some off-road vehicles, does not have any panic handle somewhere. <laughs> I like those panic handles, just the expression panic handle for the off-road cars or also for some racing cars um, that are available for sure. So now I also see GPS commands in this um, headlight display. The clicking sound of the turning indicator is also rather subtle. I think you also hear that on camera. I think they found a good solution there. We have some of the French um, uh, cars at the moment, which have a very strange turning indicator sound. So I'm, um, you know, I'm always paying attention to that in detail as well. Root guidance is not only a head-up head-up display, also in those digital instruments. By the way, some more information. You start with a very small screen and the analog instruments. This one is already an option. So if you get a low spec version, it might look different. But this one in the middle part, this will be the same. So there's the bigger root guidance there. So you can three places where you can see the root guidance. So overall, you can't be mistaken then for the root. And so far, I'm also um, quite fine by how we are led actually by this root. So that's that's really perfectly okay. Um, Climate-wise, the AC does have a lot of power. Um, you know, I'm driving the Tesla Model X still. Um, at the moment and sometimes the AC lacks a little bit of power there um, but here the AC is actually quite powerful so that might also be important for you especially if you have this panoramic roof then it can get quite hot in the vehicle so now more countryside routes and I guess one of the most important things is that this car creates a very cozy feeling in the interior so you feel at home feel comfortable in your in your living room so that it calms you down and I think this is something um, very good they've achieved that you can just call can calm down in inside this interior also for co-drivers yeah, yeah. couch potato feeling couch potato feeling yeah <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> so next I think we have to turn yeah, I think the the root commands here and the and the displays that could sometimes be a little bit more ahead in the center display in the um, in the center display in the instruments for example shifting again i think they have really managed that very well smooth transitions right there overview by the way well you know it's an estate you know where it ends you can directly see that to the side mirrors is also very well possible what about those assistant systems well we have the blind spot monitor which is uh, one of the most important optional features. It always comes with the AEB. There we have it. This one here is the blind spot monitor. You see that red stripe then you shouldn't change lanes. And then when I set the turning indicator, it flashes. It doesn't give an acoustic warning. We have the different with, I think, Audi and Mercedes both. For example, give an acoustic warning when you also set the turning indicator. But here it flashes or it stays on the light all the time. This is one option you must go for. This is really good for safety. The city assistance brake, the autonomous brake, this one is included in every Volvo now. I think it's also a very good step they are taking there. Other than that, you also have different cruise controls. There is a standard cruise control. Then we have here the adaptive cruise control. So the speed to the car, or the distance to the car in front of us is being kept. I can also increase this distance or decrease it. Let me just close up to the car in front of me and I can show you that better a little bit. So now the distance is being kept and if I make it a little bit longer, then the car is reducing speed just a little bit. So, but we also have the so-called pilot assist. And if we said that, we have a, yeah, a green sign in the instruments. It's not meant to be in fully autonomous drive. You have to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but just that I can show you, it is basically driving on its own now. 
again keep your hands at the steering wheel this is just for show purposes now i'm ready to grab the steering wheel again and if i don't grab it the car should also start to uh, tell me yeah thomas you're an evil driver please keep your hands yes <laughs> he now says please steer again so um but it's very stable here also you know it really keeps the car very stable in the lane and usually what we've seen that all of those assistance systems are working really flawlessly with the Volvos. Before we get off, let's see if... No, now the pilot assist was deactivated. Why? Does it deactivate automatically when I change the lane or what? Let's see. If it... Yeah. So um, unlike some systems we've seen um, from the other manufacturers, it cancels itself as soon as I set the turning indicator. But I mean, I would say when you get off the motorway, probably even the better idea to do it just yourself, right? <laughs> this pilot assist can be very helpful in traffic situations. We've tested that with the XC60 in our review. Also compare that one. If you're thinking, oh, should I go for a Volvo Estate or SUV maybe? Because, um, yeah, see here also that it, the, it steers itself basically and it assists you really, therefore it's called pilot assist. Now let's see, traffic sign recognition, yes, showing me the new speed, but it's not adjusting the speed according to the new traffic sign, that's, that's hopefully not possible here. So um, I really have this pilot assist ready always when I'm in traffic jam and for example, um, you know, staying at very low speed in like 10, 20, 30. And then you can also keep your hand off the steering wheel if you're just rolling, you know, in, in the traffic jam and just relax yourself a little bit and the car is uh, accelerating and decelerating on its own. This is a really helpful feature. So I wouldn't really use the, is this a two lane or a one lane? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I really would use it on a motorway everyday basis, uh, but I would surely use it in the traffic jam. That's um, for sure really cool. Good acceleration here, definitely. And we know one difference is to Mercedes and BMW, they have rear wheel drive, Audi, and this one you have either front wheel drive or the all wheel drive. Yes, those rear wheel drive models, they are sporty to drive, they are a little bit more fun. Here you feel you are pulled from the front and then pushed from behind. So yeah, if you're a sporty driver, you will have more fun with the rear wheel drive. Maybe then in winter times, which is uh, again crucial for Sweden, for example, where the sky is coming from, then the front wheel drive probably make, makes more sense. Or then if you, of course, have the all-wheel drive and you're always looking at the small Swedish flags here installed the seats. I'm not sure if you've seen it on the, one of the interior overviews. If you're interested in the T8, by the way, the new plug-in hybrid or the T6 uh, plug-in hybrid, as I said earlier, two plug-in hybrid will be available. There's also this colorway model I've showed you on Geneva Motor Show in the static review and also more colors of this vehicle. So tune into this video as well. If you could not get enough from the Volvo V60 here from us yet, other than that, we have covered all of the different driving aspects. Consumption here about 6.7 liters now on the one kilometer, so that's again not far from the seven liter figure, and again, um, you know, one of the weaknesses. But overall, definitely an improvement to the previous generation in every single way. You also have to steer a little bit more than you maybe would like to have, not so progressive the steering. But overall, this car sets sails on a very comfortable ride. Great seating position, great seats itself, comfortable suspension, calming, no, calming less noise on the interior. Then, of course, a great sound experience if you want so, especially with the optional Harman Kardon system. And if you do not pay attention so much to a very sporty drive, then probably this one here is surely among the best offerings in the midsize segment. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Volvo V60. Well, exterior rise, I think they have it definitely on point. So a very beautiful styling, elegant for sure, more elegance than sportiness and 
that's also something that sums up the driving very comfortable you feel at home feel in your living room but not that of a sporty touch i think it's also not necessary because then you can really pick do you want it a little bit sportier? Well, maybe go to another brand of those premium manufacturers. But if you are setting sales on this very comfortable living room experience, then you're really satisfied here with the V60. In general, also, the interior, just wow. I think, to me at the moment, the best interior here now in the midsize segment. It has this emotional touch, but at the same time, also a cleanness from the Scandinavian design and also great solutions here also for the lower or the mid trim levels and not only in the high trims. So, and of course here the biggest change dimension wise in the second generation is that you now have more leg room at the rear. This is you know, among the biggest changes. So a lot of positive elements, negative ones was, you know, the, um, the cover on the trunk there in the, in the rear could have been a better solution consumption too high and steering feel uh, steering wheel feel was a little bit too numb those were my negative points for today other than that especially styling wise and the materials that are being used and the build quality really superb so surely among the best picks here in the mid-size segment would it be my pick at the moment in the mid-size segment hmm. I think probably yes, when I get you know a bright blue exterior then, especially then in the contrast to the interior we have here today, that could be re really my thing. Um, because I think in everyday driving life, um, I would also be okay to not have this very sporty feeling. And if it you know would be more important to me to have some more racing experience in the everyday driving life, then you can always go for a three series or something. I think we really, point out what's the emphasis of this car and overall I really really like it. What about you? Tell me your comments there, your opinion right there in our section and discuss here with our audio community and see you next time.